Welcome back to another reaction video where we're going to react to a rising star that came on the Tasty Trade Network. We're going to see what this person is doing to trade options, what they're doing well, what they're doing wrong, and I'm going to give my opinion at the same time. So let's get into it. Um, you started trading recently, mm. only a couple of years ago, right. and you are been watching Tasty Trade, you said, pretty steadily for the last a little over two years. A little over two years, yeah. Yep, beautiful. I, I just want to give him some Pretty steadily? Some. He said every day for the last two yeah. years. I'm giving people some every context. I, I want to give a little bit, bit about your background so people know. Mm -hmm. Undergraduate, it's on there, just came, um, and you're, after you graduated, you, you with your undergraduate degree, which was in what, finance? Finance and accounting. Finance and accounting. Yep. You went to work in the financial service industry. Correct. You thought there was, you traded a little bit, you thought there bit. was more out there, mm -hmm. and you decided to go back to get your graduate degree. Correct. You went to Boston College, mm -hmm. and after you got out of Boston College, you went to work for a large financial institution helping to do portfolio management analysis? Correct. Okay. On that the last, management side. Yeah. That lasted a, a little over a year, whatever, mm -hmm. and you decided that there's more to this. Yep. You, at the time, were, let's say, 27, 28. You decided to um, start trading, and that's what you wanted to do. And there's a lot of people listening today that that's what they want to do. Sure. And you decided to make a career out of this. Mm. You took all the money you had saved up over the years and everything else. Yep. And IRA, 401k, right. liquidated. You're a, you're, you are, a, as we would say, a private. You're trading your own capital, right? Correct. OK, now it's your turn. Let's talk strategy. What strategies do you employ? So I only sell strangles to open. I usually look at a 20 delta strangle okay. to start. And then if I want to be a little more aggressive, I may get into the 30 delta or 35 delta. Uh, but for the most part, the default is a 20 delta strangle. Do you have certain volatility um, uh, criteria that you look for? Obviously, I look for a volatility pop, and that dictates how aggressive I'll get. Being product indifferent is really nice because you can have extremely uncorrelated products. And so I usually have a little bit of everything on. Even if volatility is very low, you can still make money in some of those other products that you might not think How many could. different? So just before we move on, as I said, selling a short strangle is selling a put and selling a call at the same time. And it makes the PL graph look like this. So you see that basically you're betting that the stock is staying within a range. You're betting that the stock will stay between your strike, the, your put strike and your call strike. Personally, that's one of the strategies that really blew my mind when I started trading options because now you can literally be paid for a stock to stay within a certain range that you choose. Positions do you tend to carry at one time? I have at least 10 and up to about 20, the very most. Do you find it difficult to, you've been doing this only a couple of years, do you mm. find it difficult to manage 10 to 20 positions, um, you know, simultaneously? For me, I think that's about the right number. So the answer is no, I, don't, I think that's a reasonable amount. If I had 40 positions, maybe then that gets to be a little too much. Did you start two years ago trading this way, or did you start trading some other way? You said you never bought an option, so there must have been, right. you've been pretty consistent. But yep. did you start with defined risk, never buying an option? Did you start with undefined risk right away? I just went full in undefined risk. You were just confident. But you had some experience, you know, obviously had a lot of financial experience before in, in, in the sure. industry. Yep. I had some experience, and I had a professor at Boston College that allowed me to do an independent study and I was looking at put call parity and stumbled on the fact that volatility was overstated in the S&P 500 and started watching Tasty Trade a little bit more and eventually put those two pieces together with the mechanics of managing a strangle and then also having that knowledge in the back of my mind that okay I've done this research myself I do believe that volatility and fear is overstated and that in the long run if you're in uncorrelated products this should be a profitable venture. On the one hand, I agree that yes, okay, volatility tends to be overstated. That's usually what you will hear the argument in favor of selling options. However, and that's really the big however here, it's always about how you're going to manage the losses. Because, you know, usually the argument that goes against selling options is that it's picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Because, of course, you're going to make money most of the time. You're going to win very often. But when you will lose, you will lose a lot of money. That's basically how it works when you 
you're selling options. When you sell options, you're going to make a tiny amount of money very often and your losses will tend to be bigger. And so that's really mostly about how you manage losses when things go wrong rather than, you know, what is the volatility at some point and everything. Me, at least that's my experience. When you initiate your positions, because you're, it's you sound like you're you're kind of trading by the book, which I love, you know, because it's you, you're trading clearly by mechanics that we mm. we encourage everybody to use. Um, are you, how far out are you starting when you when you make trades? Like, what's mm. the duration? What do you think is your average duration that you set up the trades for? Average duration is somewhere around thirty five days to forty. Right now, Perfect. I've extended duration just because there's volatility in almost nothing that I trade. So. I'm looking at 60 days out right now, personally, but that's just where my comfort zone is from a risk perspective. And to give you a bit of a benchmark, a bit of a KPI for myself, every position that I set, every trade that I take will represent 2% of my overall net liquidity. So let's say that you have a $50,000 account. Well, per position maximum, the buying power required to open the position should be max $1,000 because $1,000 represents 2% of $50,000. So that's the maximum that I would allow myself to place as uh, at the opening of a trade and that's the buying power required that's really on this that i'm going to base myself so let's talk about your first full year was 2016 right no 2015 so 2017 is the first full year it started okay, so april 21st of 2016 oh april 21st okay yep. perfect april 21st i like how you get the exact dates oh you got a beautiful little graph there i like this even better so you, this is 2017. I am looking. Correct. Okay. I thought we had 2016. No. We 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 have two charts. We have a cumulative performance. There you go. They just, they give it to you. Ah, yep. uh, that's perfect. all time. Okay. And then he has last year. Okay. Right. Leave that up for one second. Yep. So you started in April 22nd, 2016, and you um, uh. And how did you do, what, what's the first year? Like, not the first full calendar year, but just how did you do in 2016? So 2016 was 72%, and that was a partial year. It was a great year to trade Delta neutral. It was a Damn, that's crazy. 2016, he made 72%. Whoa, that's, that's impressive, honestly. That's a great return. Maybe I should start selling short strangles, honestly. But I guess, you know, the thing is, if I remember well, I think they closed almost unchanged. So they were really trending in a range. So if you're selling, you know, short strangles, so you're delta neutral, you're not betting on any direction. Well, at some point, your trades are always going to come back in your favor because the, the market is just going to go in a range and is always going to come back in your favor at some point. So the problem is if the market is going one way or the other, other very strongly then either the put side or the call side is going to get really really in trouble so that's why 2016 and the strategy that he was using well that matched perfectly and we can see that with his results i mean that's amazing 72 percent everyone would love to have 72 percent in a single year absolutely the best because we <laughs> yeah. did absolutely we closed on pretty much unchanged 2015 mm -hmm. 2016 we pretty much closed unchanged sure. that's exactly what i said so it closed unchanged so the markets were in the range so that was perfect to trade this Type of strategy so you made how much 70 what 72 percent 72 percent from april to december 31st yep. in 2016. now did you think there was something weird about that or did it seem normal to you there was something not quite right okay. it was it was a little too easy for selling just started, i expected to not do well initially so you were selling strangles, you expect it not to well, and you make 72% on a fairly substantial amount of capital. Mm. And you're thinking to yourself, either I'm a genius, I should have been doing this my entire life, I didn't, why did I even go to college? <laughs> More so the second one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, or what's wrong with this picture? Yeah. You know, why isn't everybody doing this? Sure. Okay, whatever it is, because you just, you know, you just found it, whatever, it, you, know, mm. you ask all these questions. And then all of a sudden, along comes, 2017, which is very different. 2015, 2016, the markets didn't do anything. Sure. We, we kind of normalized with respect to market movement in 2017, mm. and we have a, a year where there is very little um, two-sided movement. Yep. So um, tell us about 2017. So 2017 started out really well, very consistent, and was actually in cattle. You see that rather 
precipitous drop there. That's a cattle move? That's a cattle move. So oh my cattle God, move you're all over the place. A, more yeah. in a couple weeks than it had since about 2003. I was reading online where traders were going bust. And I ended up not rolling out the position. I reached my maximum pain point. And looking back on it, I wouldn't have made money there, but certainly would have recaptured a lot of that capital. Got it. And yeah, there's always some outlier or things like that. Right. But so, so what was the cumulative performance for 2000? What was the performance for 2017? So 2017, those numbers are a little old. I'm now at plus 17% for the year. I mean, 17% for the year, having like an outlier loss. I mean, that's amazing. You know, the only thing that I'm uh, wondering is that reaching like 72%, you know, trading around 10 positions to 20 positions, selling short strangles and civil contracts. Apparently he has quite a lot of capital, but you know, the problem is always in getting over leverage, you know, because you see that it's doable, you can make money, then start increasing the number of contracts and then one day you get burned. So that's why I wish we knew how he did in 2020, because you know, like that's usually where geniuses fail, like when you get too big and then the market just reminds you that you're not so smart and you know you're just like everyone else plus 17 percent good job nice that's a nice comeback from a mm -hmm. you know from a mm -hmm. from a bad drawdown mm -hmm. yep so in 2016 for three for three quarters of the year 70 percent of the year it was plus 70 something percent and then mm -hmm. 2017 plus 17 percent just correct. so i get the numbers right yep okay and that's on your total portfolio correct using about how much of your cash of your I'm all over the place. I could use zero. I could use up to 100% a few times. That's where it's really dangerous. Using up to 100% of your capital, you know for a fact, it's not even like, you know, a possibility. You know for a fact that one day it will really hurt you. Because the thing is, when things are going fine, it's, you know, there's no problem in using 100%, except that you never know what comes next. And if you have a 2020 type of things that comes and you're using 100%, you're going to meet a margin call and you're going to have a ton of losses. But in general, I'm around that 50% of capital. Around it. So you always have some kind of capital available. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And what do you think about, like, when you think about your... Um, you talked about your directional drawdown. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you said you had about a 25% drawdown on just your directional scalping and things like mm -hmm. that. What other kind of mistakes have you made? The biggest mistakes I've made have been not rolling out and taking that delta that you go into the last five or 10 days and reestablishing the position out another 30 days. And if it takes a year to get that back directionally, just keep rolling it out. So just for those who might not know, rolling out means that you're going to close your current position. So you're going to take a loss on your trade, but you're going to open a new position in the next expiration. You're going to collect a credit for that. And by collecting a credit, you're going to reduce your break even. So to make it really simple, you're making your situation a bit better. The only thing though, the really only downside to this is that you're locking up capital for a position that maybe you could use your capital elsewhere to better open opportunities. And also you need to have the capital to be able to handle a potential drawdown. So if the stock goes, let's say by 50% against you, are you able to handle a 50% drawdown on the stock that you're currently trading? That's really the question. Yeah, and and you've, you've, you've found that to work in the underlying, I mean, you haven't, you've been lucky in that you haven't got caught in, in something that just hasn't come back. Sure. So, um, you have a lot of commodity-based underlyings, you know, that mm. have been two-sided as opposed to, you know, some of you, you've, you've effectively avoided some of the stock sure. moves that haven't, you know, yep. that haven't turned around at all, which is, which is, listen, that's a credit to, you know, to what you're doing. Sometimes it's a little bit of luck, you know, sometimes a little bit of luck. Sure. I mean, sometimes you, you'll end up with a year where, you know, the stocks move crazy and next year the commodities move crazy, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. So you have to just be, you have to be careful in that regard. I agree. You always have to be careful because you never know what's coming. In my opinion, it's really important to always be careful. Just make sure that you don't over leverage yourself. Personally, I always invest maximum 30% of my capital. So remember that I told you that I invest maximum 2% per position? Well, in total, I will invest 30% in total of my capital and I won't go further. The rest, I will leave it in cash. That's just how I feel about it. I feel good with using 30% max. When 
you got out of uh, when when you got out of when you graduated from grad school and you got out of the um, and you worked for you went to work for a large financial service firm. Do you look back at that and go, like, what was I doing? Like, I mean, you know, do you think about like the skill level there versus the skill level that you've acquired now? Like, does it does any of that stuff does it come into play when you think about you know opportunity and things like that? Sure. I mean, it's, it's a little scary, you realize, the financial education, even on a financial advisor side, is pretty interesting for me. Because I went in there and understood a little bit about options and really loved what I did, loved the clients, and got to work in private equity in a lot of different areas. But when you look at the difference in education of what professionals know versus what the average tasty trader knows, it's, it's huge. That gap is massive. Yeah, I, ve I very, very much agree with that. And I'm not saying that every financial advisor don't know anything about options. That would be really unfair to say this, but I'd say a very large proportion of like so-called professional people in the finance industry have no clue about all of this when you know buying a passive index fund might be good for some people that don't want to get involved and i get it it's, trading options is not for everyone let's be fair however if you are interested if you have like you know the will and you're interested in finance then you might as well trade options it will be good not only in terms of returns the returns are one thing but also in terms of risk adjusted returns you will have less risk trading options than actually if you were buying a passive index index fund. The reason is because you're reducing your cost basis. Every time you roll out in time, you're reducing your cost basis. And you're also going to be a lot more like diversified in the strategies that you're using. And you're just going to, on top of that, have better returns. So why not doing it? And some people are going to say you're going to pay commissions and everything. Trust me, I made a video recently saying how much money I made training options in 2021. And I showed how much commissions I paid in 2021, including the commission including the cost of trading options. It's way better to actually trade options in terms of returns than actually buying a passive index fund if you have the will and interest to actually get involved in this. Of course, if you're not into this, you just want to you know, put your money aside in the markets and just want to watch it grow over time and you're not interested in this, then fair enough. But if you have the will and the interest, then there is all the reasons in the world to trade options. There is really no reason to not trade options. What is the most important criteria then with respect to your success? Has it been the liquidity of the underlyings? Has it been managing your winners? Or it has it been kind of the the strategies you've selected or the size of your positions? I know that's kind of a, it's like a multiple choice question sure. with four different. I think size of the positions is the most important thing. Because yeah. that lets you cascade into yeah. being mechanical and not doing anything stupid. Yeah, I you know what? And it's so funny when you say that because we know that, mm -hmm. and we still make those mistakes. Sure, like, sure, sure. You know, the only thing that I can handle being wrong in the market and everything else, but the only thing that's created drawdowns for me is just my size. Yep. You you directional know. size, not the yeah, size sure. necessarily you're putting yeah, on. Yeah, but still, it, it's all, mm -hmm. even if it's non-directional initially, mm -hmm. everything, everything's non-directional on day one, it but on directional. day five, sure. it's a directional position. Sure. And then you're dealing with some kind of, you know, directional adversity and you have to figure out how to deal with it. Mm. I'll answer the question that he asked. I think that one of the things that will put you in the best position to trade options is, of course, the size and everything. But it's also a deep, fundamental understanding of the mechanics of, for example, selling options when it comes to sales to trade way of trading options. When you fully understand what you're doing, when you fully understand what is the risk, what is the purpose of, for example, rolling options? When you understand all of this, then the confidence that you gain is really a massive advantage because now the confidence that you're gaining is exactly going to be the only single thing that will help you go through the bad times that will help you go through the drawdowns without freaking out and just you know panic selling and everything because you will understand the fundamentals you'll be able to be patient and stick to the plan thanks so much for having watched this video please make good and informed decisions i'll see you in the next video in the meantime i wish you all the best